Hello and welcome back to Real Analysis part 64. In fact, this is the last part in the series and here we will close the topic of Riemann integrals. This means that you will find subsequent topics in other video courses on my channel. So please check them out and of course I have to thank all the nice supporters that make these video courses possible. Now, in this last part today, we will talk about improper Riemann integrals and the Cauchy principal value. In the last videos, we have talked a lot about improper Riemann integrals, but still one case is missing. Namely, this is the case when we have an unbounded function f that has a hole in the domain of definition. So it's defined on the interval a, b with the exception of one point p. So the typical example, as we have learned in the last video, will look like this. In other words, here we have an infinite area that stretches to plus infinity here, but on both sides of P. Therefore, the whole area is finite if both areas here are finite. This means that we can define an improper Riemann integral for F by using the definition from the last video. And then, the integral symbol for the function f also makes sense. We simply define it as the sum of two limits. The first limit should give us the left hand side of the area, which means we integrate from a to p minus epsilon. And for the second limit, we want to have the right hand area and therefore we integrate from p plus epsilon to b. So you see, what we really need is that the one area is finite and the other one. In other words, both limits have to exist such that the improper Riemann integral here makes sense. Therefore, to make it clear, these two epsilons here are independent of each other. Therefore, maybe we should rename them. So the first one is epsilon 1 and the second one epsilon 2. So you should always remember, we actually have two limits here. Okay, then I would say, let's look at an example. So let's calculate the integral from minus one to one of the function one divided by two times the square root of the absolute value of x. So this is a well-defined function on the interval minus one to one with the exception of the origin which means the function is not defined at zero. However, maybe the two limits here exist and then we know the improper Riemann integral also exists. Therefore, just let's copy the two limits here, but now it's easier because p is equal to zero. And now you should see, because of the splitting here, we can get rid of the absolute value. This simply means that for the positive part we don't need it at all and for the negative part we can put a minus sign in front of x. And with this rewriting here we can immediately use an antiderivative to solve the integrals. The first one here is the function minus the square root of minus x. This is what you can check, forming the derivative here gives us the function there. And indeed a similar thing we get for the positive part. There is just the square root of x. Okay, then in the last step, we just have to put in the upper and the lower number here. So the first one here gives us minus the square root of epsilon 1 minus minus the square root of 1. And then the second one is simply the square root of 1 minus the square root of epsilon 2. Therefore, in summary, you should see we only have plus 1 plus 1, which is 2. So you see, we can just use that the square root is a continuous function, so the square root of zero is zero. Hence you see, this here is a nice example where the two areas here exist. On the other hand, we also already know a counterexample where the integral does not exist. Namely, this is the integral of one over x. So you see, this here looks similarly to before because we have an integral from minus one to one, but it turns out that this limit and this limit will not exist. This is simply because the antiderivative is the logarithm which goes to minus infinity when epsilon goes to zero. However, if you look at the graph of the function, then you might think that this integral exists. 
This is simply because 1 over x is a symmetric function, an odd function. Hence, the area on the left hand side stretches to minus infinity and the area on the right hand side stretches to plus infinity. Moreover, in absolute size, they should have the same area. However, together with the orientation, this blue one is a positive area and the red one is a negative area. Now, by calculating the limits, it turns out that the blue one is infinity and the red one is minus infinity. And therefore, adding the limits does not make sense. However, we still can put meaning to saying that both areas should cancel out. And indeed, this generalization is what we call the Cauchy principle value. So this construction can help for improper integrals that don't exist. And in order to distinguish it from a normal improper integral, I will put PV in front of the integral sign. However, I can tell you, there are a lot of other notations one uses for the Cauchy principle value. Nevertheless, let's immediately start talking about the definition. Now, the overall idea is that we just use one epsilon for the definition of the limit. So first we go from minus 1 to minus epsilon. And then in the second part we go from epsilon to 1. In other words, we do this approximation in a symmetric way. And then in the picture we immediately see that the finite areas here will cancel out no matter which positive epsilon we choose. And of course we also see this in the calculation because we know that the antiderivative is the logarithm. More precisely we know that the antiderivative is the logarithm of the absolute value of x. And of course we have it in both cases and then we see everything will cancel out. Hence in fact the Cauchy principal value of this integral is exactly zero. So in summary you can remember the improper Riemann integral of the function 1 over x from minus 1 to 1 does not exist, but the Cauchy principal value does exist. And indeed, there are some applications where the Cauchy principal value is sufficient. Therefore, you should also remember here, if the improper Riemann integral exists, then the Cauchy principal value will exist as well. Now, in addition, we can also define a Cauchy principal value for an integral from minus infinity to plus infinity. And indeed, the simplest example we can choose would be the function f of x is equal to x. Of course, the improper Riemann integral of this function cannot exist. However, as before, if we do the limit in a symmetric way, we get out a result. So you see, we do a symmetric integration around zero and then we send a to infinity. And of course, in this case, we immediately see that the result has to be zero. Now, obviously, this whole construction here can also be applied to more complicated functions. And maybe it can help in cases where the normal improper Riemann integral does not exist. And often you see such applications when you deal with so-called distributions. And in the case that you are interested in such things, I have a whole video series about distributions. And moreover, in my complex analysis course, we will also talk about a more general version of the Cauchy principal value. So you see, after finishing this real analysis course, you can immediately go to the next topics. And with this, thanks for listening and have a nice day. Bye.